Hi everyone, I'm Justin Ashbrook and today we're going to be looking at the Doctor Who content that's available on HBO Max. And just to start out, I'm not actually going to tell you yes it's worth it or no it's not worth it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the facts, what's available, what's not available, what the upsides are, what the downsides are, and I'll let you decide whether it's personally worth it for you or not. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Doctor Who videos like this, I do Marvel videos, I do DC videos, sometimes I post music. And before we begin, please give this video a like and please consider subscribing. It really helps me to know that you guys enjoy the content that I'm making. And I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the summer. So if we are able to do that, I would be really happy. I actually forgot that this was open, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. I actually forgot that this was open, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. Okay, so now that that's done, let's get started. So the first question is, can you actually get HBO Max? HBO Max costs 15 US dollars a month and lets you create five profiles. So it does allow for shared accounts. If you were to split the account five ways, you would each pay $3 a month. Currently, HBO Max is only available in America, but you can still access it if you're outside of the US with a free VPN like Ola Better Browser for Chrome. I'll put a link in the description for that. They are planning to move into other countries soon. I think the first uh, region that they're planning to do that in is Latin America. So now that we've established whether you can get HBO Max or not, what are the upsides of getting HBO Max if you're a Doctor Who fan and what Doctor Who content is available? HBO Max has New Doctor Who Series 1 through 11. Series 12 is not available yet, but it will be added later on, as well as future series, like Series 13, assuming there is one. I hope there is. There probably will be. The big selling point for HBO Max for Whovians, in my opinion, comes from something different entirely, which is the Doctor Who spin-off shows. All four seasons of Torchwood and all five seasons of Sarah Jane Adventures are available to stream. To me, that's a really big factor that would tip in favor of someone who likes Doctor Who getting this. If you haven't seen those shows, they're really good, and they add a lot to the Doctor Who universe. There are even two Sarah Jane Adventures episodes that feature the 10th and 11th Doctors, respectively. In case you're interested in checking those out, the 10th Doctor one is called The Wedding of Sarah Jane Smith. Stop this wedding now! What? What's going on? Who the hell is that? I don't believe it. Who's he? Master! I said stop this wedding. She promises to love and honor her husband. The wedding ring goes on, then she's agreed to it. She's totally under the trickster's power. Marathon place, but she forgets all about this. She starts living a new life. Forgetting about her old life. Protecting the Earth. And the 11th Doctor one is called Death of the Doctor. It's, it's you, isn't it? Oh, you've done it again. Hello, Sarah Jane. Doctor? That's the Doctor. What Doctor? The Doctor? My Doctor? Hey, what are you going to change? Ah, yes, the Clawshan Sheep of the 15th Funeral Fleet. I've been looking for you. Have you been telling people I'm dead? I apologize. The death notice was released a little too soon, though I can rectify this immediately. Torchwood didn't really have the Doctor ever appear, but in Season 2, there are some episodes with Martha. Jack, your VIP visitor is here. Didn't realize we were having a visitor. Suddenly, in an underground mortuary on a wet night in Cardiff, I hear the song of a nightingale. Miss Martha Jones. 
So now that we've talked about what Doctor Who content is available and the upsides, now we're going to talk about what are the downsides and what Doctor Who content can you not get through HBO Max. The first downside is that it doesn't have Classic Who. If you're in the US and I believe some other countries, you can get that through another streaming service called BritBox. The Doctor Who spinoffs Class and the K9 show aren't on there, but I can't see that really being that big of an issue. I personally really didn't like those shows. I just found them kind of forgettable. Although I haven't rewatched those series recently, so maybe if I rewatched them, I would like them better. The biggest downside, in my opinion, is the monthly costs, especially if you're not in a position where you can split it with other people. It costs 15 US dollars per month, so just if you're not in the US, just convert that to whatever your currency is, which is either the most or one of the most expensive streaming services. To compare, Netflix costs $8.99 in USD, Disney Plus costs $6.99 US dollars. DC Universe costs $7.99 US dollars and Hulu costs $5.99 US dollars all per month. The $15 per month price point is more than double some of the others I just mentioned. You can bring the price down like I mentioned if you were to share the account with others and split the costs. The only thing that made it worth it for me personally was that I had a discount code to knock the price down to $5 a month because of my DC Universe subscription. It was an add-on. So I hope that cleared up any questions you guys had about Doctor Who content on HBO Max. Please do all the YouTube things like like, share, subscribe, and let me know in the comments, are you planning to get HBO Max and why or why not? And as far as the videos that I'm in the middle of making now that you guys will see pretty soon are uh, one is a pretty big announcement of a collaboration I'm doing with a lot of different Hootubers so stay tuned for that. I'm also going to be interviewing a Star Wars expert so that will be pretty fun and then I have a few Batman related videos about some of the animated shows. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Stay shway.